reading from Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18 from the New International Version. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. The Lord's word is blessed. All who hear and obey his word are also blessed. Our Father, we come to you in the humblest manner that we know how. First of all, we thank you for last night's sleep, and we slept and slumbered in the very end of the day, unaware of what is going on around us. But our Father, you walked up all night, kept us from all the day to all the day. Then early this morning, you woke us up to a day that we have never seen before. And we know we we'll never see it and know that we will. But we know it was your will that did us walk this morning, not something we've done, but what you've done. So thank you, Jesus, for all things you've done us, all these long lives that you yourself and I bless you. Now, Father, when it comes to the end of our eternity, you don't want to want to know what that is. So we pray that you call us home peace, or that you praise you forever. Good morning. These are your Connected in Crisis announcements for the week. Mail-in voters, verify. All members and friends who use the mail-in ballot can go to your county elections website and verify that your ballot has been received and is in proper order. If any still plan to vote by mail, you are strongly encouraged to deliver your completed ballot to an official drop-off point rather than taking a chance by mail. The church family will help with rides if needed. Also, on election day, all members are requested to pray for peace and safety over all our country. Our God's intervention will eliminate any plan of the evil one. Saba Hunger Walk. The San Antonio Baptist Association's annual Hunger Walk will be held next Saturday. Funds collected are used to support food pantries like ours among member churches. We only have this week to raise funds for a very worthy cause. You can either make a donation by envelope or app, market Hunger Walk, or collect and turn in $100 as a virtual walker. Call 210-226-3448 for a package. Are you winter ready? Church members, do you have proper heating, clothing, and bedding for the upcoming winter months? We are brothers and sisters, a body of believers united by the blood of Jesus. If one hurts, all hurt. Please let the pastor, deacons, ministers, and deacons, wives, and widows, or the office know of your needs. Don't worry, there will be no pictures, public name calling, or anything else to bring attention to you. We are concerned about your health and safety. Oh. Healthcare Open Enrollment. The 2021 Healthcare Open Enrollment begins today. November 1st and continues through December 15th. It is critically important for all citizens to review your government provided or private health care insurance coverage for the upcoming year. We are living in unique times with a higher than normal probability that illness will touch our lives. We know that God will take care of us. He has already given us the blessing of inquiring and maintaining health coverage to use if needed. If you need assistance or have questions, please contact the church office. Scripture, Scripture of the day. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, 
the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9 and 6. These have been your announcements for the week. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. Let me tell you about the history of our Hunger Walk. We started in 2010. We were over at the Mission County Park, which is on the San Antonio River. Beautiful site right along the, the San Antonio River. What happened the next year is the city decided they were going to renovate the San Antonio River, so they closed all the, uh, the pavilions there. So we came here in 2011 and been here for the last, those will be our, our ninth one here. And so we're really excited about that. We've had, you know, we raised 17,000 the first year, the next year we went up to 30,000, then we went up to 40,000, and we've been kind of stuck at around 50, 58 was our high last year. So we want to get to that 60,000, so help us this year. Come on out, have a great time get out uh, outside we're gonna be outside and in November outside in South Texas is great weather so we want to see you here uh, on November 7th Keisha, tell us about the medical arena. How are you and, and what's your job like? What's your experience? Um, well, I'm a respiratory therapist, so high demand right now with COVID going on and all of that. So, um, I mean, it's, it's been a good transition going into the medical field, just uh, learning all I can. <laughs> uh, what type of safety precautions are you taking? Oh, well, we definitely have all type of PPE, like protective gear that we wear when we have COVID patients from, uh, you know, gowns that we wear, foot booties, hair nets, face shields. I mean, we just, we go all out. So my hospital's doing very well on keeping us well stocked on that stuff. So. 
do you see are are patients seeming to do a little better now the survival rate and things like that in your opinion uh, yes. i feel like they have better some things that they've established already that they know that work versus things that they just tried to do in the very beginning when it was ramping up and it was really high and they were just putting everybody on ventilators so now they have a lot of steps they do before they get to that are you all utilizing remdesivir at, at yeah. your okay okay remdesivir okay. and the uh the plasma transfusion so they're all doing that okay are the patients uh, relatively tolerant? Are they grateful for you all? Do they treat you nicely? Yes, 90% of them, yes. They are very nice. They try to do everything that we say to do. Um, I think it's gotten better. In the beginning, they said, you know, there are a lot of people who, one of the things that they found is really good is people laying on their stomachs. Because really? you have more volume. Yeah, you have more lung volume in the back, so. If you lay on your stomach, you're, you're getting more lung volume to expand and actually go ahead and, what am I trying to say? Like, take a deeper breath? Yeah, take a deeper breath and get more oxygen into your blood, basically. Okay, okay. So, in the beginning, they had a lot of people who were very uncomfortable. You know, most people don't lay that way. So, um, but I mean, as time is going on, more people are like, okay, you know, let me try to do this and on my own and stuff like that, so. What about what about persons' beliefs? Do do y'all do they talk to you about? I didn't think this is real, or or do you or wow, I didn't think it would happen to me. Um, they've had a lot of people who just were like, I didn't even think this was real, you know. But you know, they ended up mm. with it, positive, and you know, it's it's a it's a reality shock to a lot of people, you okay. know, that this is this is something that's really serious and. Um, can really, you know, there's a lot of people that have died from it, and a lot of people didn't believe that. So, right. um, I think with the more precautions that we're taking and just, you know, more trial and error of what they've done that didn't work, I, you know, people mm -hmm. are, they have a better success rate. Okay. Well, thank you for the interview, and you be blessed <laughs> and stay safe. <laughs>
before your altar, Lord, with great appreciation for you and who you are, Lord, in our lives. We pray, Father, for uh, the sins that we have committed, knowingly and unknowingly. We lift them up to you, God. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins as we repent before you now, God, and ask that you would cleanse us, Lord, and strengthen us in our faith walk. Lord, I pray for every one of your children that's existing in this world today, Father. You know our needs. You know our thoughts. You know our deeds. You know, Lord, you know, our, you know our patterns, God. Help us, Father, to embrace you and put you at the forefront of our lives, God, that this world may be changed because of your presence illuminating through us, God. Lord, I lift up the bereaved families to you. So many families are hurting all over the land, near and far, close and distant, Lord. Seems like so much is happening in this period of time, Father, and we just ask that you would comfort, Lord, where comfort is needed, strengthen where strength is needed, guide where guidance is needed. Lord, give peace where peace is needed. And Lord, your love is needed everywhere. So, Father, please, please, please touch those that have lost loved ones and are trying to figure out, what do I do now? Father, we know at the end of the day, if we would just remind ourselves that what I need to do is depend on my God who has brought me this far and will not leave me, that all will be well with every soul that's grieving in this season. God, I pray for those that are sick, those that are very ill, long-term and short-term, those that are ill in the body, ill in the spirit, ill in the mind, Father. We know that you're able to heal, Father. So we pray, Lord, that our loved ones will not give up our, ourselves, that, Lord, we will not grow tired in talking to you and requesting from you, Lord, a touch from you. Help us to depend on you, Lord, and maintain our faith as we go through, Lord, every day that you give us on this earth. And, Lord, all of our loved ones, that are sharing together in worship now, Father. Let your spirit fill the homes, God. If there is disagreement in the homes, Lord, let there be peace. If there's confusion in the home, Lord, let there be understanding. Is there, if there's a lack of love in the home, God, let there be love. If the home is broken, Lord, let it be mended. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every home, God. I pray for every situation, Lord, that our loved ones are facing, Lord. Hear your children. Hear the needs. I pray for the families, Lord. I pray for children. I pray for adults. I pray, oh God, for this world. I pray, oh Lord, for the election that's coming up in our country, God. I pray that things will be done decent and in order, Lord. Uh, Lord, bind Satan in the name of Jesus. Everything else will be all right if you just bind Satan for us, God. Everything else will work out. We depend and we trust in you, God. We thank you, thank you, thank you for hearing our cry. Let there be safety, peace all over the land. Lord, and no, no, no craziness, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, your word is always so powerful. So as we prepare in a little while, Lord, to receive it, thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for putting a smile on our hearts when we wonder where our next smile would come from. Thank you for putting joy in our spirits when we didn't know we had any joy left to receive. Thank you for you, God. Bless all your people and all that are need, in need and whatever the needs are. Lord, thank you for making ways for us. Thank you for providing. Thank you, Lord, for you. Thank you, God. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen.
scripture today is found in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. New King James Version verse 46. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior for he has rewarded the lowly state of his maidservant for behold henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. We want to speak from the subject today, Sounds from the Temple, Mary's Song. Sounds from the Temple, Mary's Song. Every week I spend a lot more time working on the Lord's worship experience for the upcoming Sunday. Previous times I could focus solely on the message. Now I'm having to do a few other things to the glory of God. 
What I, what I found is that dur during, the, during the week, I keep receiving senses of joy and appreciation for what God is doing. E even, even in me where I would be tired and weary, I'm fully energized over and over. And I began thinking about what is it that seems to stick out in the midst of all the word that I'm getting, the sermons uh, that are being preached to me, the studying that's going on, the reading of God's word, the sharing, the preparation. What, what is it that, that just makes me feel good inside uh, in addition to the word, in addition to the presence of the Holy Spirit? And the thing that I realized is that, is that every day, in some form or fashion, I am working on uh, the music of God, the songs of God. And so often we, we undervalue uh, the music ministry uh, in the church family. We, we take it for, for granted. And, and, and it's kind of interesting because I began to think, think in this previous week about uh, heaven and what heaven is going to be like. Now, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I got to share a few things with you that, that's interesting. In heaven, we won't have uh, certain things that we have on earth in the worship experience. In, in heaven, we won't have the officers of the church. In, in heaven, we won't have the various ministries. In heaven, we won't have a deacon ministry to care for God's people. Angels will handle that. In, in heaven, all of us preachers won't be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ because we will be with the good news and we will be experiencing the good news. In heaven, there are no pastors. In heaven, there are no preachers. In heaven, there are no deacons. In heaven, there are no ushers. In heaven, there are no ministry leaders. In, in heaven, there, there, Lord have mercy, there are no Servants as we know them on this earth. But you know what is in heaven? Musical presence. In heaven there's singing. In heaven there's music on the varying instruments. Isn't it interesting that the thing that transitions to heaven is music? The scriptures teaches, teaches us that there, all of us ought to have a song on our heart. Even, even, even in a strange land, we can find a way to praise the Lord. And so, and so I applaud our music ministry and the efforts that you do every week with us now. You haven't stopped. You've improved. And because you have improved, because you all are working so hard, God's people are being blessed. God's people are being strengthened. God's people's hope is being reassured. God's people's joy is being greater realized because you are working so hard. Thank you. Thank you, singers. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, visionaries. Thank you for the Lord using one vessel uh, to bring about a spiritual move through song every week. Thank you for all of you for trying and not giving up and working hard and continuing to do what you do. You're making a difference in the lives of others and you give us a glimpse of glory down here. Yeah, we know, we know songs. We know songs from the Bible. When we think of songs in the Bible, we quickly run to the songs because indeed they are songs. But there are also songs in the New Testament. And when we go to the New Testament so quickly, we think about the songs centered around the birth of Christ. You know, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, or glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. We, we sing these songs, e -E Emmanuel, we sing these songs around the celebration of the birth of Christ. And in Revelations, Revelations, uh, is known for some musical expressions. 
In Revelation 5, 12 through 14, it says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. That will work as a song in my spirit. In Revelation 7 and 12, it says, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. That's, that's music to my ears. In Revelation 15, 3 and 4, it says, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. It's music to my soul. And in Revelation 19 and 6, it says, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. It's music for the world to know and to realize. It's reassuring for us to be able to appreciate. But today I want to reflect on a song that his biological mother and his spiritual follower, amen, sang to us. It's called Mary's Song. And I don't want to get too deep into it or unpack anything. I believe that the song speaks for itself. So I just wanted to take a moment just to walk through Mary's song with us. I hope you don't mind. When I look at Mary's song, I see some things in there that stand out to us. As I look at verse 46, I can see that Mary's song is personal. Mary's, and it says, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. Y'all see it? My soul magnifies the Lord. And verse 47 says, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. That's not a mother talking right there. That's one who recognizes who the Lord, her Lord and Savior is. That, that, that's one who doesn't mind, amen, feeling the overflow of the Lord in her spirit. That's one who has a home in the kitchen and a moan and a groan that makes you know everything is all right. Y'all know how big mama used to do it. Grandma, gramps, whatever you call her. But you hear that sweet, sweet sound of melodic voices coming around the house, singing around the house as she made her groceries, her dinner for the evening, supper in the south, dinner in the north. But big mama, grandmama, amen, would put that thing together and she did it with a song and a smile. It's personal. Who Jesus is, who the Lord and Savior is, is personal to her. He's, he is more. He is more than her son. And that's, that's what a song ought to remind us, that, that, a, that, that our Lord and Savior is more than a figment of our imagination. He, he's more than a story told once a week. No, no, no. He is present with me. He walks with me, talks with me, tells me I'm his own. Verse 40, 46 and 47 show that Mary's song is personal. Verses 48 and 49, amen, shows that Mary's song is not just personal, but it's testimonial. Uh, yeah, yeah, because she says, uh, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he, he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. I know many a sister today, amen, have, have uh, embraced and taken the phrase, I'm blessed and highly favored. And that's nice and cute, amen. But the truth of the matter is, the scripture says that about Mary. And Mary recognizes it, not in a puffed up way, not in a braggadocious way, but in a way of gratitude and love. She sings a sing, Mary, sing your song, girl. Mary's song is testimonial. He has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. She sees herself as a maidservant, not as his mother, claiming authority over him, but a compassionate one who is grateful for what he has done 
for her. And she recognizes that because of what he has done for her and what his angels has promised her, generations will call her blessed. Mary's song is personal. Mary's song is testimonial. Verse 50 shows us that Mary's song uh, is compassionate. Verse 50 says, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Do y'all see how the Lord is working this thing out through Mary's song? Mary, Mary not only uh, alludes to herself in the previous verses, but, but she implores the reality that, that, that God is blessing all of his people. His mercy goes beyond me and my family, but his mercy uh, covers all of those who fear him, not that are afraid of him, but who fear him in the form of reverence and humility, recognizing that he is all power, that he is capable of speaking and I live, or speaking and I die. He is capable of separating me from hell's damnation. I reverence him. And she says, everyone who reverences him in that level, everyone who fears him in that way, his mercy covers. And it doesn't just go to the people that she's living with. She reminds us that it's from generation to generation. Thank, thank God for Mary. She says, my song is personal. My, my, my song, my song is testimonial. My song is compassionate. Verses 51 and 52 show that Mary's song is protective. Look at what he says. Look at what he says. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. Watch out those who are puffed up. Watch out those who think you deserve what you think you deserve because you can have a phrase or two. Watch out for those who care not about the lives and love of others. Watch out for those who are greedy for filthy looker, Luke, lucre. Watch out for those who just love money beyond any imagination. Watch out for those that are all puffed up in your own self. He has shown strength with his arm. That is my savior. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their own hearts. You don't even know you're doing it to yourself. All we have to do, church, is be still and know that God is God. Hallelujah. He has put down the mighty from their thrones. Yeah, you're trying to build an empire and an infrastructure, but you'll find yourself a beggar, sort of like in the movie Trading Places, with Eddie Murphy years ago. A amen. And he has exalted the lowly, the downtrodden, those that have been forgotten about, those that were looked over, those that were walked on, those that were pushed back. Yes, God has exalted the lowly. Mm -hmm. Mary's song is personal. Mary's song is testimonial. Mary's song is compassionate. Mary's song is protective. And in verse 53, Mary's song is productive. How is it productive? Yeah, it said, he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. What are you saying? What are you saying? Oh my God. God is saying here, church, you don't have to worry. Because you've seen time and time where Israel didn't get it right according to my precepts. But, but. I did not base what I do for Israel on what Israel does for me. I base what I do for Israel on my mercy. So when God judges you according to himself, you can't help but be taken care of. Thank you, Lord, for the production. Thank you for still holding everything together when we don't deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for loving your people when we don't deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for keeping your people when we don't deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for being everything we couldn't even think of being. Yeah, you make us productive, Lord. You, you produce out of us 
verse 52 says, he has put down, the, I'm sorry, verse 54, he has helped his servant Israel and in remembers his mercy, of his mercy. Everything that we had to depend on, amen, came through God's mercy because without his mercy and his grace, we would not exist. But because of his mercy and his grace, all things are possible through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Mary's song is personal. Mary's song is testimonial. Mary's song is compassionate. Mary's song is protective. Mary's song is productive. That's good news. That's the kind of things that ought to come from the temple of God. Mary, Mary is a twofold representation of the temple of God. She is the vehicle which housed our Lord and Savior in his uh, developmental state. And now she is the temple that carries the message uh, that brings forth a text for us to share with one another today and encouragement today that that Mary knows who she is in relationship with God. And you, my brothers and sisters, are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. And we ought to have certain sounds coming from us, emanating out of our spirits. And our sounds ought not always be pity parties and sadness. Our sounds ought to be sounds of hope, uh, sounds of love, sounds of reverence, sounds of knowing that it is well with my soul. Our sounds ought to have a measure of personal testimony to it. Our sounds ought to have a measure of compassion to it. Our sound ought to have a measure of protection with it. Our sounds ought to have a measure of productivity in them. And finally, Mary's song is eternal. Mary's song is not a one-hit wonder. Mary's song is, is, is not like, uh, let me give you one from my youth in the world. Chi Chi and Pepe sang a song, uh, uh, I think it was Rock the Boat. Don't rock the boat, baby, rock the boat, don't tilt the boat over. Yeah, yeah, that was the only song I think I heard from them. Uh, something like, I know, I know I'm in love or something like that. But they didn't last. One hit wonders don't last long. But a song from the Lord, a song for the Lord will keep us going. Verse 54 and 55 captures the eternal state of Mary's song. It says, he has, amen, 55 says, as he has spoken to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Verse, verse 55, he, he has spoke to our fathers. That means he, he did something back then. That, that means he has a historical reference that you can reflect back on. That, that means generations ago, I can still see God working. That means generations ago, that the people of God could hear a word from the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, to Abraham and to his seed. That, that, that means that as he promised Abraham, you'll be father of many nations. And not only would Abraham hear from the Lord, but his seed. So the father of many nations meant that every nation, every seed, and seed of a 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 seed, Amen. Would hear the word of God and would receive that mercy and would know that God is taking care of them. And the word of God says forever. That is futuristic. Not only does he take care of the past, not only is he working now, but Mary's song says that God has us covered forever. God be the glory for covering us forever. And it's all because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would perish, but would have everlasting life. Don't you know that Jesus at Calvary paid the price for us? That death, burial, and resurrection put a smile on our face and a song on our heart. 
Thank you, Mary, for giving us a pattern of song. But thank you, Jesus, for giving us a purpose for song. Now, there are many ways of dealing with what happened at Calvary. There are many ways of sharing uh, about the gospel, the good news of Jesus the Christ. As we celebrate this Sunday, remembrance of him, I wanted to throw to you a unique way, another song from our brother Paul. Yeah, as he wrote in his letter to Timothy, the first letter, chapter 3, verse 16. Here's how Paul sang that thing to Timothy concerning the good news of Jesus the Christ. Paul wrote about the great mystery, which is the gospel of godliness. Uh, he said, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Maybe I sing it too fast. Let me take it around again. Isn't that what they say in, in the church, in the choir? Take it around again. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome song. Thank you, Paul, for capturing the essence of the good news of Jesus Christ in a phrase that has six statements. And it covers us, and it completes us, and it puts a harm in our heart. And it lets us know that no matter what we face, Jesus has done everything he needed to do to establish eternity for us. Now it is up to us to walk in this newness, walk in his love. If you have not received, today is your day to accept Jesus as personal Lord and Savior of your life. Who is he? God was manifest in the flesh. Uh, how do you know that? He was justified in the spirit. Did he have any witness? He was seen of the angels. What did he do? He preached unto the Gentiles. What happened? Believed on in the world and as a result was received into the world. Means he's not dead in the grave. He's alive and well in glory. May God bless you with a song today for your heart. May God put a smile on your face and a song in your heart because that's what we need in a time such as this. As we walk through all the things we face, it is well, it is well, it is well with my son. God, we thank you today for your word, for your people, and for your presence. We hum hallelujah. We hum hallelujah. We hum hallelujah. In Jesus' name.